Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK, out foraging again, and uh, I'm having a lovely time today. We're in a beautiful place. As you can see, this is the banks of the River Wye in Herefordshire, and we just saw a lovely grass snake, maybe three and a half feet long, so a nice big mature one, um, basking in the sunshine. It's been great fun. There's wild garlic over there. There's hogweed everywhere, the primroses are out, and the birds are singing. So you'd think this was an idyllic environment. There's lots of native species where I'm standing as well. We've got nettles everywhere, which are, uh, well, debatably native, I suppose, but we've got dock and burdock and comfrey and wild garlic and uh, other species that you'd expect to find on a riverbank. Unfortunately, we've got one invader, which is probably the most numerous plant growing over in this section here. You can see these leaves, these are what we call the cotyledon leaves of the plant. Those are the first leaves to come up, much like a, a cabbage. A different shape to the rest of the leaves that the plant produces. You can see these second and third sets of leaves all have a serrated edge and red tinges to the veins on the leaves. You normally and around the edges, around the serration as well. You normally get a bit more redding on the stem than this. Certainly on the very young ones, you can sometimes see an entirely red stem on uh, a plant that, like I say, I don't really like seeing. It's called Himalayan balsam. It grows on riversides all over the country and it's an invasive species. <coughs> This is the young stuff, so um, it's a very, very impressive plant. When it grows to full maturity, it will get up to about 10 feet tall. And uh, around this area where we've got all these nettles and everything else, they'll all be dwarfed. Even the hemlock, our tallest native umbellifer and uh, the burdock, will be dwarfed and overcrowded by a forest of Himalayan balsam which will be very beautiful as well when it goes into flower it's got one of the prettiest flowers around here it's uh, a sort of hood shaped flower with a bit of a trumpet and the um, trumpet can be white with pink and purple it's very pretty with hundreds of flowers on one plant so a forest of those beautiful flowers will appear here later on in the year but in doing so it will be strangling out all of our native flora. Um, that's why this is pretty much number one on DEFRA's hit list. We don't want to see this plant around the country. Brought over, I think as I said, by the Victorians. They brought over lots of things that they probably shouldn't have. Um, this was one of them. It was brought over to a botanical gardens where it escaped through its amazing seed pod mechanism, which is quite exciting when you first find it. Um, it grows these kind of kite shaped seed pods, which inside have a, a tendril that's spring loaded. And what happens is when the seeds reach full maturity, any little bit of touching them will explode and release all of that energy from the, the, the wound up tendril and fling the seeds up to 21 feet. So imagine here we've got thousands of the plant flinging its seeds 21 feet and then bear in mind that each plant can create up to 800 seeds. So we're talking tens of thousands of seeds just if we let this patch get to maturity. And where's it throwing its seeds? It's throwing them into the river where they're gonna float down and they're gonna colonize other parts of our riverbank. So that's why it's so invasive. And that's why from wherever it was brought to, I'm not exactly sure where it's escaped and is now all over the country. As foragers, we can help with that because it's an edible plant. I actually quite enjoy these young cotyledon leaves. They've got their own unique flavor and they're succulent, they're juicy, a little bit like pennywort. But not everyone enjoys them, and some people say that they get a sort of funny, kind of almost sherbet-like um, feeling in their mouth when they eat these leaves, so they're not for everyone. The more mature plant is, is used, I believe, in Nepalese recipes and North Indian recipes, Himalayan balsam from the Himalayas, so that's where it was used first. And then those seeds that I was talking about, once it's matured, those seeds are something that we do eat. We try to collect as many as we can to stop them spreading when we find them. Um, 
because they do taste quite good when they're young. Um, people compare them to pine nuts. I think that's a bit of a stretch of the imagination, but certainly when they're green, they're quite tasty and they're a good addition to a salad and things like that for a little bit of crunch. When those seeds go black, they're um, a little bit tough and a little bit more bitter, so I don't make quite so much use of those. Um, but when you're out in places like this as foragers, you know, we try to look after our environments. That's something that I find really, really important. We always try and leave places Places just as nice as we find them um, and places like this where there's Himalayan balsam growing at the end of a track that no one from the council is going to visit in the next few years there's no harm in taking a little bit of responsibility and uh, removing some of this stuff for yourself easy to kill just pull it out throw it on the floor your problem is that there's dormant seeds in the soil so you'll have to keep coming back and doing that each year plus this patch will be replenished with seeds from different patches of Himalayan balsam growing further up the river. So highly invasive. Um, please don't try and spread this plant. And if you do find it, pull it out, chuck it on the floor. Oh, take some home to eat as well. Anyway, if you want to find out more, go to www.wildfooduk.com.